have a very special guest. The Chrysalis Foundation, which is an amazing organization we have here in Central Iowa that gives back to uh, young women to help make sure they can reach their potential in life. Uh, they are doing a luncheon conversation series. I was able to be a part of the last one, but we want to yeah. introduce who is the star uh, that's happening. Oh, the yes, the star. The rock star. I Janae that. Frog, <laughs> The thank world you. heavyweight champion. That's what people say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the world champion. That's better. Okay, that's better. Okay. Okay. Janae yeah. Fromm, thank you so much for being of here. Of course. You're Thanks part of the me. next uh, speaker series, which is this afternoon. This afternoon, absolutely. So um, I'm excited about it. I was able to be part of the Chrysalis event last year and really fell in love with the organization. You guys know about mm -hmm. what, how much good they do for girls and women in the community. And so when they invited me back, of course, I said yes, and looking forward to continuing that conversation. Well, besides coming out and just having wonderful company, a nice lunch, what can they expect from uh, showing up today and hearing what you're talking about? Well, my my passion and I believe kind of my purpose in life is, is just to help people become who they're meant to be. Mm -hmm. I think we all want to live a meaningful life, but somehow life gets in the way mm -hmm. <laughs> and we all end up kind of living in mediocrity. And so what I try to do with my messages is just make it very basic about reconnecting to who you truly are, not who everybody else says you're supposed to be, but who you're meant to be and figuring out what's holding you back and then living a life consistent with that. So, um, it's all about really becoming who you're meant to be. And where does this come from? Can you give us a bit of your history or your story? You know, I, for me, I, I've i always felt this way. I, I went through some things when I was very young. My father dying of cancer when I was, when I was in my teens, which was mm. very difficult. No. Um, and then some chronic pain that I've lived with since I was about um, 15, 16 years old. But then when I was 36, I was diagnosed with the same cancer that my father had. Okay. So that kind of set my life on a different, um, just a different intensity, mm -hmm. I would say. Went through a year or so of chemo and all of the wonders that chemo has. Yeah, all the, yeah, yeah. the things that go along with it. Yeah, and exactly. And just decided that I needed to live a life that was authentic and awesome and do things that scared me because I, I truly believe we're our best self when we're doing things that scare us a little bit. For you personally, what are some of those things? Well, uh, I started running when I was 40 um, and I'm not good at it. That's <laughs> I was, I was say, why? Right. Why? Well, no one was chasing me. Exactly. Okay. That's yeah. what we always yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Don't running run and less chase. Running yeah. is for felons. I have a lot of really great pictures with me with medals on, but th they give those to everybody. Hmm. And um, I, <laughs> they do so it's, they do. Yeah, it, it's really not. There's it looks impressive. <laughs> right. Like on Facebook, I look awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I like to do things I'm not good at because I think I think we find ourselves at the back of the pack. Um, so I've done a lot of I've done a couple Ironman events. Are you familiar? Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. So a couple of those. Uh, I've climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania a couple times. Ran with the bulls in Pamplona. Uh, you oh you ramped it up from I started running to Ironman and now Kilimanjaro. <laughs> climb the mountains and run with the bulls. Everyday things that normal yeah. people would do. Right, that's yeah. what you're doing this yeah. weekend, yeah. right? Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. Stuff like yeah. That. So, what would you say to young ladies that might be at this luncheon or they're going back to speak to groups that they're familiar with uh, to get them inspired to so they can do, maybe, you know, we're not going to climb a mountain today, but what is something we can do today just to inspire us and get us to live the best life we possibly yeah. can? Oh, well, we may not climb a literal mountain. But aren't we all climbing mountains every day? Mm -hmm. Whether it's you know overcoming an interpersonal conflict or dealing right, the two of you, yeah, I yeah. can see it, right? The, the tension, struggle. The tension, <laughs> <right. laughs> and so I think in order to do that, we have to listen to our heart. I, I think we have a head voice and a heart voice. Our head voice is very logical, very strategic, and thank goodness for it. But our heart voice is much more compassionate. And where our head may know what's best, I think our heart knows us best. And so sometimes it's just getting quiet listening to that true self and following it even though it scares you. Now you said that you found, you discovered your true self. You said you decided that you wanted to find your true self. What was the one thing you were doing that you didn't like about yourself that you were doing? Um, I didn't like that I was only doing things that I was good at. So I was, I was kind of, I kind of set my life up in a way that I was doing things that I was succeeding at, which we all do that. Why wouldn't right. we? That's, that Com makes sense. Comfort I mean, it zone. seems common sense to do that. Comfort zone, right? right. So, yeah. but when you step outside that, I wanted to choose hard things. So up until that point in my life, hard things had chosen me: the death of my father, chronic pain, cancer. I wanted to start choosing hard things for myself because there were such good lessons in the hard. So embracing the hard things in life and choosing them for myself and 
being able to reconnect with the lessons that it taught me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to hear more about cancer and, and how you know your journey through that and how it changed you as you went through that. So for me, the cancer journey was not as hard as surviving cancer. And what I mean by that is, when I was going through treatment, there was a plan, there was a process, I had a cheerleading squad, you know, right. I, people behind me, I had doctors, and we were all doing what I was supposed to do. And then I came out of treatment, and I had a first clean scan, and I had a second clean scan, and that's when the fear really hit me. And I realized, probably over the course of a year or so, that I was really living my life as if I was still in the crosshairs. Um, kind of looking over my shoulder all the time and I didn't know how to be a survivor. I only, I was a good cancer patient. Right. And I was super inspirational, <laughs> but I didn't know how to survive cancer and I, I hated living scared like that, mm -hmm. which is why I started doing the things that were scaring me because mm -hmm. I okay. wanted to live um, a different type of life. I wanted to live through the hard things, not, not just survive them, I wanted to be my best self during them. Out of all the things you've been able to experience yeah. since then, is there one that really sticks out in your mind or where you might have had what they call like an aha moment? Morning television. I think definitely this today. <laughs> mm, today right. would be this the day. moment. Right. This uh, Hulk Hogan, 1987. <laughs> okay. Andre the Giant. Andre, yeah. Other than that, I think we've okay. covered it. <laughs> Get everything one blanket. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, if you want to laugh, if you want to be inspired, folks, you have an opportunity to do that while you're having lunch today while also supporting just an incredible, incredible organization we have here, the Chrysalis Foundation. They are absolutely phenomenal with what they do for women in this community. So help them out, be inspired, have some lunch, and you can do that all today at the I, Greater I Des Moines Botanical Garden starting at 1130. It's only $40. I don't want her to go yet. I no, know. Uh, well, she's not. She's, I'm just giving you information how you, she, everybody she else. I mean, yeah. we get to keep her at least for a few more minutes, but if you it's, want to, you out there want to experience uh, her head over to the botanical uh, garden uh, greater des moines botanical Bar garden 40 bucks you're helping out an organization and you're going to be inspired so you know. where did you grow up indiana small Indiana's. small oh, yeah. small town go yeah. blackhawks <laughs> you say no so what are you going to do next uh, uh, yeah what's the next well, scary yeah, thing yes. bucket list? Yeah. this um yeah th this summer uh we're going to thailand we're gonna be working with um, some endangered elephants in the jungles of thailand are you really and, yeah isn't that cool yes i know very cool i told you i'm impressive hey, you are very <laughs> impressive and uh and then everest is on the bucket list um we're gonna next year uh not for a summit bid but definitely for uh base camp and to summit some of the smaller they're enormous peaks, but I'm some sure. of the smaller mm -hmm. peaks um, in Nepal. And so. you have a history, I mean, your background, you've done some climbing before, so it's not like you're just tackling this out of nowhere, right? Right. Um, I've done trekking. Uh, so Kilimanjaro is a trekking mountain, um, okay. but that will be the first time I'll be uh, with crampons and some of the more technical climbing. Right. But why not? What do you do on a daily basis? Not much. Okay. Not much. <laughs> she has to rest up to climb mountains is what she has to do. In addition to doing the speaking that I do, I'm also a leadership consultant. And just last year, we did start a company, my husband and I, taking people to the top of Kilimanjaro. Okay. So come with us. Okay. okay. I think that sounds like trip. a blast. Yeah. And we do life and leadership lessons along the way. So I think it sounds like a blast. Live broadcast from the top of Kilimanjaro. Wait, Let's do not? it. Why do not? That. Hasn't been done before. You are something else. You yeah, are instantly, instantly likable. That's when yes, I went up to no you outside question of the about glass. It. I'm like, oh, she's awesome. I want to talk to her all morning. <laughs> you could tell from the moment you said hi. Yeah. That's amazing. Thanks for Thanks. being on Thank you so much yeah. for coming Thanks on. Thanks for having me. It was Whatever. fun. I'm trying to think of something else because I want to keep you around. Do you well, have like a dog or a cat? <laughs> I do. Gertie. Yeah. Gertie. Gertie, mm -hmm. what kind of dog is she? What kind you like? Uh, you, well, you, what kind do you have? <laughs> She's all kinds. That's She's all kinds. Like. That's what I like. She's all Perfect. kinds. Okay. But I can tell you what, if you want to hear more of Janae, if you want to meet her, if you want to you be inspired to her, yeah. today, <laughs> you can do that while also supporting the Chrysalis Foundation today starting at 1130 Greater Des Moines Botanical Garden, chrysalisfdn.org if you would like more details because their speaker series continues on throughout the year. You know, people always say, well, who do you like to hang out with? Do you know who I want to hang out with? Janae. This yep. is a lot of fun. Do I get a vote in that? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is our show. Our you show have to stay here. Okay. <laughs>